Hi, welcome to The Shed. I'm here with Dave King, drummer extraordinaire. Uh, we have a few questions that we like to ask all of our artists when they uh, come to The Shed. First off, Dave, what are you listening to? What am I listening to right now? Well, that's, a, that's always a question you want to have an answer for. Yeah, right. I listen to everything. I encourage every musician and every non-musician to listen to as much music as possible. So I listen to, I can't really zero in because it's too much, but all music, all genres. Great. Another thing, uh, we have a lot of students that are working on trying to get a great practice routine together. And a lot of times they come to us and they're like, we're stuck. We're not feeling like we're getting any better. Do you have any tips for those students that feel like they're plateauing? I would say that, you know, so sometimes we want things to happen quicker than they can and I think especially today with immediate access to things that inspire us um, that doesn't necessarily mean it translates to immediate uh, you know improvement and just because you're checking out a lot and practicing doesn't mean you know that it's all sudden gonna happen you gotta really work for it and stay in there I think it's pr pressing through the harder times is the way to become a great artist on in any medium so I would say just um, stop having expectations to get better. Sure. That's always great advice. Um, another thing is you're a really creative musician. You're someone who's playing in a ton of bands, all different kinds of styles. Uh, any advice for students that like are like, oh, I, oh, I'm a funk player or I'm a jazz player, trying to get them to think about maybe experimenting, playing some other stuff? Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, there's a part of me that encourages, you know, checking everything out, but doing what you love, you know, whatever, you know, it, it didn't hurt the greats in their, in, their, in their genres to be focused on what it is, you know. I mean, Elvin Jones wasn't a, a great R&B funk drummer. He was a jazz drummer, and he was incredible, and he focused his, his thing there. I just think that... You know, there's so much music today that I guess improvised music today, jazz, creative music. Um, you can't help but be really, you know, um, uh, you know, turned on by other forms than the one you're in, and to use those maybe through osmosis to, you know, their their texts to improvise with. So I mean, I think personally that people should be checking everything out, but at the end of the day, if if you're not into it, I also don't think there should be pressure that you've gotta be this or be that. I think that if you are one thing, and you know, a lot of people are, I'm not, like I'm, I listen to punk rock and that's all I do, that's fine. You know, I mean, if that's all, if that's what, if that's the music that gets you there, then that's what gets you there. Sure. What's uh, one piece of advice that you think is the most important thing for young musicians to work on their development? Again, I think two things. I think genuinely loving uh, it because it's not easy and it's it is a long road and so letting go of the idea that the timeline is similar to going to college and getting a degree and then getting a job and then doing this the 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 career path of an artist uh, creative person you know you can't put those timelines on it number one and number two you know I think that using your imagination I know it sounds a little bit like broad but I think a lot of musicians that are even out there in the world today making a living, doing it, whatever, are not really using their imaginations. Imagine what music can be. And you can contribute something new to the form. There's always room for people to contribute new ideas. And there are, there's a ton of space there, I think. Because there's a lot of derivative stuff out there and there's a lot of whatever. And I just think, man, get an idea as well as getting your chops together. Awesome. And another one final question. Um, I lost my train of thought on that one. <laughs> okay. That's all right. Um, we're big fans of the Rational Funk series. Any thoughts on uh, any thoughts on doing some uh, school appropriate editions? <laughs> well, you know, a, a lot of the stuff is school appropriate. It is, and, and in a way, you know, obviously we were using the bleeping of swearing was a very over the top. Sure. But also a commentary on the sort of beating you over the head um, violence of humor today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was much more an anti that. Sure. And also to add a surreal element 
these were very conscious decisions to we thought it was just very surreal to have an instructional video series where this person is constantly swearing and constantly being bleeped out. It was much more the idea that we were p pushing against the form. Yeah, yeah. So in a way, I felt that all of the lessons were subliminally school appropriate. Yeah, right. <laughs> and my children loved them. And at the time we filmed, they were, it was a couple of years ago, so they were like, you know, eight years old and 14 years old, 15. And I don't swear at home, and I don't act that way. It's it, they they saw that it was a heavier message in it. So, for us, it was just about pushing against the form as much as possible. But I don't know. I mean, I go to schools, and I have my own children, and I talk with people. So I mean, yeah, I don't think that Joe and I are going to be doing anything totally G-rated ever. I'm not going to lie. Both Bob and myself have shown it in class. <laughs> I think you should. I think you should. They're hearing a lot worse oh, in, the, in the playgrounds. Absolutely. And one final one. I remember what I was going to ask you. If you could go back in time and give yourself, a younger version of yourself, a piece of advice, what would you say to that younger Dave? I was just asked this for the first time recently, too, and I had a great answer before. I honestly think that there's so much pressure to be fully formed as a young artist, as a young, you know, that I wouldn't tell myself anything. I would tell myself to give myself that space, to be the wrong person for the job, to, to make mistakes, to, um, to search for something via, you know, the, the irrational spaces of creativity. We're pressured too much to be working it and being hireable and whatever, that we're cutting off a sort of elemental aspect, which is art, the artist, it's not to sound pretentious, but the artistic nature of creating. Actually having an idea that's original, that, that can be squandered when we're, and I understand the pressures of the marketplace and I understand having to be a working musician because I've done it. But I also would have enjoyed someone saying to me at the time, like, it's okay to be the wrong person. It's okay to fail. It's okay those things. It's okay to be vulnerable. You don't have to, like, show up and nail it all the time. And I think that that's what I would make sure. I would, I would want to be the older brother to my younger self by saying, like, yeah, just keep going. You're only going to be 18, 19 once. Just blow it out. You know? That's what I would say. Awesome. Well, thanks so much. Uh, we appreciate your music. And... Uh We'll see you uh, around. Thank you. Appreciate it.